Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on DLT's REST API source. Now we're going to implement incremental load. In practical scenarios, incremental load is something very important because it allows us to save computing resources. In our last tutorial on authentication, we developed together this basic GitHub pipeline. Here we import issues from GitHub and load them into DuckDB. Now we want to load only those issues which were modified after the latest modification that we have in our destination system, in our DuckDB. So this is how the data looks like in the source system. Um, this endpoint gave us the two open issues that were created by me. And if I go to GitHub's documentation on listing repository issues, then I see it also accepts the parameter um, since, which only shows results that were last updated after the given time. So this is the perfect thing we need. So therefore what we can do is we can say we have another parameter which is called since and now we're going to do something special. Similarly to the Pokemon pipeline, here we had for our berry details resource we had the placeholder berry name which was of type resolve. So this parameter here was of type resolve because it resolved the berry name from the resource berries and there it would take the name field. And something similar we have to do now. What we're going to do now is we're going to say that this is of type incremental and then we need some extra parameters. Let's look them up in DLT's documentation. Uh, they say in general DLT has three right dispositions, the full load, append and the merge. And the question is if our data is stateful. Um, so our issues, they are stateful because we can modify them. So can we request them incrementally? Yes, because we have the since parameter. So therefore the right disposition will be merge. And now, so it needs a cursor field to track the maximum timestamp value in our destination system and to compare it to the maximum we get from the source system, in this case GitHub. So therefore we're going to write here cursor path and this will be updated at because this is how the field is called in GitHub's response schema of the issues endpoint. And then optionally we can also specify an initial value and here we have to give the time stamp uh, format, the ISO one that GitHub specified. So let's say 2022, 01, 01. And we are in UTC time. Now with this we would request data incrementally from the endpoint. But we also have to teach DLT that it should use the merge right disposition. So therefore we're going to say right disposition merge. And then also we need to specify the primary key, um, the, which is the field on which the database should merge on. So in our case, this will be ID. So if we would now go ahead and run it, we would encounter a problem, um, which I'm going to discuss later. Therefore, let's start with a clean slate. So we reset the pipeline state and reset the database. like this. We confirm that yes, this is what we want. And now we can run the pipeline. And since this was the first load, the initial load, we see the two open issues here. But now if we run it again, we will expect zero issues. Why? Because nothing has changed since our last import. And indeed we see zero issues. Now let's go ahead into DuckDB and verify that the data is indeed present. Use GitHub. Select start from issues and we have two issues. And here if we describe the table we also see that it has the updated ad which we specified here and it also has the ID. And the ID has now the constraint to be not null because it's a primary key. Let's go ahead and modify one of the issues 
and then we will expect that the pipeline will load only the one modified issue. Now let's look at the updated add values that we have present in our data. So we see here that in February these two issues were updated the last time. Now let's go ahead and modify one of these issues and see if the pipeline will load only the one modified issue. So for that I go to GitHub and let's say um, I pick this one here and I edit it just um, you know modifying some white space and now if you run the pipeline we expect that it will not return zero as in the last run but one. And indeed we have one issue returned. Let's look into our database. And indeed the updated ad for this specific ticket is now April. And if you run it yet another time we will expect zero issues to be returned. Let's test if that's the case. Indeed we have zero issues. So therefore we conclude that the incremental loading works as expected. So in conclusion, we learned how to do incremental load using the REST API. The key is that we specify a parameter as being incremental and give it the cursor path if we have one. And then we can also specify initial value and also end value optionally. And very important, we need to specify the write disposition to be merged and provide a primary key so that it can actually merge the records. Now the reason why I reset the pipeline state earlier and dropped also the tables from DuckDB is the following. In our first tutorial, we had imported the issues endpoint in a non-incremental way and we had the write disposition replace. Since it's the full replacement, it doesn't need a primary key. Now when we specify the ID field to be the primary key, then DLT will go to DuckDB and issue an alter table statement that the column ID should be not null. However, DuckDB doesn't support this kind of alter table statement and will throw an error. So therefore, when we switched from non-incremental load to incremental load and therefore needed a primary key constraint, we needed to drop the schema to avoid this alter table statement being executed on DuckDB, which it cannot support right now. So therefore, keep that in mind for developing with DuckDB that from time to time you need to drop the pipeline state that you have, but conveniently, DLT offers the DLT pipeline drop command. All right, that's it. Please let me know in the comments if you learned something from this tutorial. And again, I make the offer. If you have a REST API, which you would like to implement using the REST API source from DLT, but you're not sure how to do it, I offer my help and we can do it together in a tutorial. Until then, ciao.